Welcome back. Tom Hartman here with you. On the line with us, Dr. Joe Rahm. Joe is the uh, physicist. He's a climate expert. He's a senior fellow at the Center for American Progress. He's the founding editor of climateprogress.org. He's the author of the new book, How to Go Viral and Reach Millions. His previous book, Climate Change, What Everyone Needs to Know, climateprogress.org, the website. You can uh, tweet him at Climate Progress. Joe, welcome back to the program. Hey, thanks for having me, Tom. Or I should, I should uh, respectfully say Dr. Rahm. You have uh, certainly earned that title. You wrote a piece uh, a couple of days ago or a couple of weeks ago that uh, suggests that we may be nearing, uh, I believe this was your phrase, a climate death spiral. If I have that right, what, what do you mean? Well, uh, there was an article that came out by 16 leading climate scientists which basically said, there are certain changes in the environment that are irreversible, and if you get to a certain point, they could be unstoppable. And it's like an avalanche. You know, once you start the avalanche, it's just going to keep going and getting bigger and bigger and it's bigger. And so points. you want to avoid that point. And so this article basically tried to look at what are the so-called you know, amplifying feedbacks, the vicious circles that, that if you start uh, pushing them, they actually release more greenhouse gas emissions that then create more warming um, and so on. And, and uh, what they basically said is, you know, if we hit this threshold that, that the nations of the world said in Paris in 2015, we, we must avoid, you know, two degrees Celsius warming, which is 3.6 degrees Fahrenheit. If we hit those, uh, if we hit that point, then we may trigger changes that actually take us to warming, which could be five degrees C or, or nine degrees Fahrenheit. And that, of course, would be just catastrophic. Define catastrophic. Well, uh, I think when you're talking that much warming, when you're talking, let's say, 9 degrees Fahrenheit global warming, you're now talking about moving to a world where uh, the oceans are flooding, you know, all of our coastal cities. We're talking about several feet, you know, uh, four, five, six feet of sea level rise this century, and but it doesn't stop. It would keep rising a foot a decade. So on the coastal front, it's, you know, uh, a catastrophe. But inland, uh, in areas that are semi-arid, semi-arid like, uh, you know, California and in parts of our breadbasket, you're talking about moving to a purely arid, very dry climate where the natural climate is in fact, uh, a drought. In fact, you don't call it. Of course, if, if your natural climate is a drought, you don't say you're in a drought. You just become a desert. Right. Uh, you know, that's what we mean by climate change. People have been noticing already, I think, that droughts have been getting longer and longer. Certainly, if you're on the West Coast, you notice how many long, extreme droughts we've had in the past decade or two. Uh, eventually you just change the climate so that it's always a drought and, and you get a bolification. So the, the great risk is that some of these impacts start, start and they compound and they accelerate, and that is, is the climate death spiral. So to, to, to what extent right now, what we're experiencing right now where we're seeing uh, these massive droughts on the West Coast uh, combined, combined with terrible floods on the East Coast, uh, to what extent is that the, the consequence of the planet warming versus the effect of the planet warming being to diminish the temperature gradient between the Arctic and the, and the mid-latitudes, which reduces the strength, the, the rigidity, or the resilience of the jet stream, uh, you know, this river of, of air, cold air flowing around the Arctic, uh, so that it starts drooling down over, you know, land masses like North America, and doesn't move the way it was moving when you and I were kids. And, and uh, as a result, what would have been, you know, three days of hot weather followed by three days of rain followed by three days of hot weather as the weather systems would move through is now three weeks of hot weather. And, you know, it may not be any hotter than it was before or just slightly hotter than it was before, but because of its persistence, it's so, or, or extremely rainy weather for that matter, because of its persistence, it's so destructive. Well, that's a very good point, Tom. So there are two effects going on. So we have a gradual warming, and that warming shifts 
the the if you can envision in your mind a bell curve where the tail at the far right is the extremes if you just shift that that tail the part that used to be you know a once in a hundred year or once in a thousand year storm might become once every decade so uh, you purely directly from global warming are going to see many more extreme events. And you've raised a second point, which is if we, if we change the climate in unusual ways, then there are going to be un unexpected impacts. And one of those impacts is the weakening of the jet stream that you described. And it is certainly the case that there have been many studies in the past decade that have said, yes, you reduce the, te the jet stream uh, that's, that pushes the weather all quickly in, you know, in, in the United States from west to east, that that strength is fueled by the temperature difference between the, the Arctic and, and the tropics, the Gulf of Mexico and, and the tropical oceans. Um, the, it is a well-known uh, effect of climate change that as you uh, warm up the planet, the Arctic warms twice as fast. And because the Arctic warms twice as fast, uh, you, the temperature gradient uh, does drop and you get a weaker jet stream. So clearly that has been happening. That, you know, when you talk about record rainfalls, obviously Hurricane Harvey, Houston, last year, what, a, what was described as a once in 25,000 year rain event where basically a hurricane came on shore and kind of just sat there for like three days. And, and the deluge was terrible. And in the case of, of, of droughts and wildfires, I mean, we're seeing out west, again, we're seeing static, frozen, very slowly changing weather patterns where it's just 100-degree day after 100-degree day. And so you get the compounding of uh, one of the things that happens when you get an extended heat wave is that the heat dries up all the land. Uh, and once you dry up all the land, then all of the heat just goes into heating up the land and, and making the kindling, you know, hotter. And, uh, and that's what we have. And that's why we're seeing these record-smashing uh, wildfires associated with the droughts uh, and the heat waves. So, yes, we're, we're seeing, you know, what are sometimes called nonlinear effects, where you get a quantum change in the system from one state to another a, you know, different state. And one of the points of this article that I wrote about uh, on climate progress is that the, the current state that we're in is not necessarily a stable state. And if you push it a little too hard, it'll be like, you know, you push a rock down the, the, the cliff and it hits other rocks and you get the avalanche. And so we, we have to fight as hard as possible to avoid you know, getting to that point of no return. And, you know, no one can tell you exactly what it is, obviously, because we're doing this one-shot experiment on the planet. But it is critical, you know, that if you look at the science, it's clear that we are getting closer and closer to that point. And, and that's why it's so important that we, you know, elect people who are going to push back against Donald Trump and his his wanton and reckless inaction on climate change. All right. Uh, let's talk about messaging for a minute in the in the minute and a half or two minutes we have left. Um, back, geez, ten years ago, twelve years ago, something like that, maybe even a little longer. I was in a meeting with a bunch of uh, Democratic senators and members of the House of Representatives, along with several other progressive talk show hosts. And one of us raised the issue of the uh, vulnerability of our voting systems and our, our election machines. And one of the Democratic senators said to our group, and this kind of shut down the conversation, uh, that we're, the Democratic Party is not willing to talk about this out loud because we're concerned that, because A, we're not certain that it's that big a problem yet, and B, uh, even if it is, we're afraid that it'll cause people to be discouraged and not come to vote. I'm seeing something that seems like the climate change equivalent of that. Let's not scare the chickens, right? Let's not have a conversation about what the real extremes could be or where this might go. How do we message this in a way that doesn't, you know, cause 10-year-olds to break down in tears and yet at the same time uh, communicates how grave the situation has already become and, and certainly how grave it has the potential to become? Well, one of the points that I make in the book, How to Go Viral and Reach Millions, is, look, we need to be honest. We're the... 
you know, there's enough disinformation out there. If we don't tell the accurate information, nobody will. So that's point one. But point two is you have to know how to do effective communications. And then I try in, in the book uh, to explain, you know, what it means to be effective communicators. Now, you know, look, in the case of climate change, we're not saying the problem is past the point of no return and it can't be solved. We're just saying we're getting closer and closer. The solutions are here. I mean, as you know, from my writing, from Climate Progress and my books, um, you know, the clean energy, and you've reported on the clean energy revolution, it is here. We have the solutions at hand. It is quite literally politics and politicians and the oil industry and, and the, you know, the conservative Republicans who they back who have been blocking action. So I think the message, the message of, you know, how to go viral and reach millions is quite simple. Um, we are getting close to the point of no return, but there is time to act. And what's more, the sooner we act, the, 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 the fewer the impacts will be and the, and the slower they will occur. That's the other point. Action aggressively in the near future means that whatever impacts we get occur at a slower rate and we have more time to deal with it. Yeah, that's that's really important stuff, and these these are the messages that need to be. And I mean, there's even now decarbonizing technologies out there. Yeah, we saw some of this in Europe that uh, are very promising. Dr. Joe Rom, physicist, climate expert, senior fellow at American Progress, founder of ClimateProgress.org. His most recent book, How to Go Viral and Reach Millions. Uh, before that, climate change: What Everyone Needs to Know. Uh, you can tweet him at uh, at uh, Climate Progress. Joe, thanks a lot. Thanks for having me, Tom. It's always great talking with you. Thank you so much.